All right, hey everyone, we're just gonna do like a, I think a quick inner child read. Um, these are the inner child cards, old cards, lots of young energy um, from my past, other people's past. This is like a fun deck um, and I've been feeling a little bit low in my energy lately, so harness the power of that sunshine on there. Um, these cards are great for if you like have kids, if you do tarot and you have kids and you want to like let them um, use your tarot cards without you know like bending them or breaking them. Like my mom used to have us just like spread these out in a circle around us on the floor and then basically like heat sense with our palms um, which cards to pull and it was so fun when we were kids so um that inner child deck um looks like this a fairy tale tarot by isha lerner and mark lerner i saw them at a store in mount shasta in downtown um, I'm sure you can order them online as well. But it's just a fun deck to get some fun energy flowing when, especially if you're feeling like a little bit stagnant or stuck. So let's see, inner child, how to embrace some of that playful inner child energy. Welcome in the sunshine. Enjoy the outdoors. Today is Wednesday, uh, no, it's not, it's Tuesday, <laughs> um, Tuesday 5-17, so, inner child energy, cultivation, for today. getting a sense of like embrace your appetites um like if you've been using appetite suppressants like caffeine or um like cigarettes or alcohol or whatever um like cultivate like a, a nourishing appetite um like as adults we learn to like sort of suppress our appetites or like like transfer our appetites onto other substances or people or work and the first thing I'm getting just intuitively from this reading is to like delve into what nourishes what truly nourishes like your your spiritual emotional physical appetites like on a personal innocent intuitive level okay all right, spirit, please give us a card to work with here. Give us a card to work with. Humor. There we go, okay. Those are the ones that are coming out to me. Oh, we have three, okay, great. So we have the nine of crystals in this deck. Crystals are pentacles. Um, oop, let's see. Nine of crystals. She's reading a book, being inspired by her fairy tales, and there's stockings drying over the fire here. Um, and we've got lights on this tree, like she's waiting for Christmas. Um, and she's reading to her little sister, it looks like. So. This card is about um, rebirth. That's what Christmas is about anyways. In, uh, in like, I think Celtic traditions. Um, yeah. The evergreen tree represents, like, um, ongoing life through the darkness of winter. And um, go and chop it down, like, as a means of 
basically sacrificing um and then even in more ancient traditions like actual sacrifices were made like in the oak groves by like the druids and stuff um of like goats or whatever but <laughs> um in this card we're getting like kind of a happier vibe of these two gnome girls who are like waiting for um waiting for their presence waiting to open their presence like being present um and then reading by the light of these candles which can represent hope um light in the darkness light in winter um by this fire this hearth which is well they live in this tree so for one this fire is like protection from the elements protection from um like you know a fire would normally burn a tree down so like you've created like an insulation for yourself where you've been protected so you're not gonna burn your house down by like having this fire in the background and having this evergreen tree here um it also i guess can represent them like burning away the old to bring in the new and the joyful and part of how we do that is we tell stories so this card is asking you to tell the story that brings you hope and others hope in order to um enjoy the presence of the moment and the promise of the abundance of like the universe um there's mushrooms all around this card and little frogs so uh, or toads rather and then these grapes so we have grapes mean abundance and then frogs in the winter time they um i think they hibernate there's this one toad even in alaska i think that it like freezes all the way through it's one of the only animals i think it's the only animal that does this it like freezes all the way through and it has this like natural sort of antifreeze in its blood that like thaws out its its frozen crystallized blood in the spring so this card <laughs> and then mushrooms of course they um recycle like decay so this card is like the promise of whatever has like decayed in your life or whatever feels old or outdated um this is the promise of new life from from letting go of that and shedding light on you know what what it gave you offering basically the the decaying parts of yourself as a sacrifice to the new um which you can do energetically just by intending that um and eduardo duran in his book um healing the soul wound talks about offering the spirit of whatever energy you're working with like say say you've been at a job you don't like or something you can offer the spirit of that that job um the sacrifice of your like time there that you've that you've ha had there and and say like what what can i learn what do i need to learn in order to like move up or move on or um you know whatever it is that it, that's just one example so this card is a great card for um embracing a more youthful spirit i think uh presence more than anything is is what stands out to me on this card presence and companionship i think as an adult um as adults it's it's much easier to believe like that we have to do things on our own or be alone or like power through and this card is asking you to remember to manifest on behalf of others um tell your story on behalf of yourself but in service of others so be present and uh mindful of your story and whatever you are letting go of let it light your way um in service of others especially those who come after us uh, and then we have the guardian of swords this is archangel michael um he is archangel michael is the defender of the word um so we've got the written word here doo, doo, doo. um and he's the defender of truth um he his name means he who is like god and some people believe that archangel michael is like the angelic form of 
Jesus Christ, um, like the form that Jesus Christ's energy body took in the angelic realm before manifesting on earth um, in a human body. So he also, in the fairy tale tarot, um, sort of harkens to this idea of the sword and the stone. So like, you'll be able to pull the sword of truth when you're operating from your heart center. Um, the rose is supposed to have like the highest frequency vibration of any like thing on the planet, this super high frequency vibration. It's also associated with um, Mother Mary and like the rose cross. Um, so Michael, Archangel Michael is the defender of truth and he's the defender of um, your will in service of truth that's this color yellow is what's standing out to me um and you can call on him to help guide you to like cut the cords of any old attachments like like whatever we were looking at in this card with like what you're putting away what you're offering over to sacrifice for this winter this long winter ahead um archangel michael can help you cut the cords the energetic cords to um, the people that you're working with, the, uh, um, situations that you're letting go of, um, the personal traits even, or, like, energies that you would like to, you know, stop inhabiting, you can ask Archangel Michael to cut those cords, um, also there's this golden rose up here, and there's really this cool golden rose meditation that, um, I remember being given, I was in energy healing class when I was younger. Um, you basically, when you're grounding yourself, like, in your physical body, um, you can send up a beam of light into the heavens and then send down a cord of light to the center of the earth. Um, and this cord basically holds you in place in your body, grounding you, and also holds your energy body in place, like grounding you in your physical presence um while also manifesting awareness of like your multiple energy bodies if you ascribe to any of that so the golden rose is a meditation that if you feel any blockages in like connecting with higher source or with um nature you can send a golden rose up your energy um up your energy cords like or down through the earth and it acts like this drill and like like a little bomb um like I, I picture it like mario for some reason like throwing a little like a flower like a fire flower um like you get the fire flower and you can throw little bombs that's what this golden rose meditation makes me think of so archangel michael can help you cut cords he can also help you establish your energy cord by like sending this like these reinforcements um this um golden rose like bomb meditation so <laughs> um yeah um that's all i've got to say about this card i think purple is inspiration gold is like um truth light he's got the sun up in the corners here and then like wind being blown from down here and these golden feathers so this card also indicates like um I have a golden feather on my, like, box that this thing sits on, my little god box. So the golden feather indicates, like, messages from spirit and being aware of messages from spirit. So Archangel Michael can um, help you divine those messages as well, um, open you up to receiving messages from spirit um, in the form of, like, synchronicities or, you know, like, information downloads, um, and he can help you navigate any like downloads that might be overwhelming so archangel michael is a good playful energy for those who maybe get too serious with their um or feel too serious right now with their like energy healing or their spirituality or their you know maybe you're like up in some heady stuff regarding like how to heal or get out of whatever situation you've been in um archangel michael brings he's like the right hand man of God if you ascribe to that um 
and even if we just look at it as like the fairy tale tarot as like a story being told like he's the strongest angel so you can call on him for support um to help you stay grounded connected truthful honest brave in your truth and then receptive to divine messages uh, yeah thank you archangel michael and then the three of swords um brings this dove of peace there's this um i think this card is the card of rapunzel in the fairy tale tarot this also got this like golden rose up here so again calling on like clearing um three swords create this triangle the triangle is a triangle of manifestation so this is like and she's got a key in her hand so she has the key to her manifestations even if she's like locked in this tower um and her manifestations involve um cutting away whatever like basically doesn't belong in her little triangle like of of power like there's a reason that the eye all-seeing eye is like in a triangle and, and i think it's because like in a lot of i guess esoteric traditions the triangle represents um willpower and then the circle around a triangle like if you're looking at it from the point of like the deathly hallows or something is infinity right so like in order to um manifest like from infinity or from the infinite universe or the abundance of the universe we need to focus on what it is that we want and the swords help to like cut through that um which is like why the deathly hollows has like a wand through the middle that's like your intention your willpower your ability to like divine essentially um and she holds the key to that through apparently through this dove um who brings like tidings of spring these purple flowers um purple is the color of royalty it's also the color of um third eye like the third eye chakra um being able to manifest in your third eye um so if you're feeling like a little bit stuck in your situation right now or like like you're unable to get out like you can, all you can do is like look through the window um at, like that this you're like in these walls and there's just this window and it's just you with this like i don't know these swords like you have the key to get out of your situation simply by visualizing by being open to receive the dove is peace and then this woman is like feminine right the divine feminine's power is like receptivity um also i mean the dove came with an olive branch to um Noah right on Noah's Ark to indicate to him that land was available so that he could like land his Ark um so if you're feeling like stranded by you know your divine connection um or in your physical situation establish your divine connection um with this golden rose meditation we were talking about and manifest like ask the universe don't be afraid to ask the universe clearly for what it is that you want um this is this card is indicating that you have that power so um we'll go ahead and read from the book um about these cards and just kind of do a short um i guess a little bit longer like an overview um and that'll be it okay So about the nine of crystals, the book says, a fire is brilliantly glowing inside the gnome cottage on this card as the thrill and anticipation of Christmas Eve filled the air. A stage of completion draws near. Much preparation has gone into creating a festive and warm holiday. The gestation, hope, and wonder of gifts yet to come instill a sense of awe as christmas morning draws near the mama gnome is pregnant and her candle symbolizes the light of the new soul about to be born presents under the tree remain unopened and the stockings on the hearth are not yet filled the nine stockings over the fire represent a profound receptivity to higher forces while the nine candles illuminating the beautiful yule tree turn it into a glowing crystal 
The little gnome girl anticipates the arrival of St. Nicholas, yet she knows she must sleep and surrender to another world of dreams before his magical offering will come. Expectation abounds. The Nine of Crystals marks the period of life when the divine potential of the future is near. The mama gnome is reading a story to her child. When you receive this card, realize that you are also meant to be the storyteller of your life. The story can be only as conscious as the one who tells it. What new theme, fairy tale, or adventure will you enter into next? As you move into this period of completion, trust in the goodness of what is yet to manifest in your life. A magical gift of special friendship or a new opportunity may be on its way. Yeah, so nine is a number for the completion of cycles. Like ten is the closing out, but nine is like, okay, we're pretty much done. Um, this card is also asking you like to have that excitement of like a child at Christmas for what is to come next. Like remembering that the abundance of the universe is still available to you regardless of your age like regardless of where you're at in life regardless of what you're going through the universe is indeed abundant and the only thing holding us back a lot of the time is a story that we engage in that we stick to that we tell ourselves so um if you want to change your story um archangel michael is pretty much the best for that <laughs> he again cuts away all the threads of the old um and then the sword signifies as well uh, a pen. So let's see. Guardian of Swords says. Sorry, it's taking me a minute. Guardian of Swords. Michael. The Archangel Michael has always been considered to be the captain of Christ's armies, the commander of the heavenly hosts. He was almost certainly the angel with the drawn sword, quote unquote, who appeared to Joshua before the battle of Jericho when the trumpets were sounded, the walls came tumbling down, and the sun stood still. In Revelation, he was said to lead thousands of angels with his flaming sword in the apocalyptic battle against the ancient dragon, representing Satan, the fallen angels, and the demons. Michael is the celestial personification of spiritual might and willpower. If you need to protect your mind from negative thoughts and confusion, a prayer to an angel under Michael's auspices will comfort you. When it's time to summon extra courage to face an important decision in your life, the overlighting guidance of Michael will illuminate a path of truth for you to follow. The name Michael actually means who is like God. He is the archangel who is charged over the Roman Catholic Church. While Michael has provided divine inspiration to thousands of soldiers, knights, and warriors through the ages, he is not responsible for the evil deeds and excesses that are committed by men of free will in times of war and conflict. Michael attempts to instill in humanity the sense of God's awesome creative power to manifest goodwill on earth. His greatest strength is felt when the sun travels through Libra in September and October, while the earth in opposition to the sun is passing through fiery Aries. In this card, an armored Michael reveals his towering presence over our planet. The sword of truth, mental clarity, and goodwill is offered in friendship. This card also reminds us of the way of the cross, the pain and suffering we must bear throughout many lifetimes as we serve our friends and companions. The red rose suggests the eventual flowering of humanity and the mystic fellowship of planetary warriors who have sworn eternal allegiance to Christ of universal love. When Michael makes his presence known to you, you may be weary from one of life's many battles. Rekindle your passion to live according to the highest truth possible. The spirit of honesty and righteousness is upon you. Remember Jesus' words in the Garden of Gethsemane shortly before his crucifixion. Not my will, but thy will be done. During the contemplative interlude, your own faith and belief in higher powers can be restored. Walk the path of life with humility, confidence, a heart of gold, and noble intentions. Oh, that's pretty intense. Um, yeah, so that, this card is asking you to, like, also embrace those ideals of, you know, like, the child who... Remember when you were a kid, maybe you wanted to be, like, a Power Ranger or something, and the Power Rangers stand for their... Each has their own, like, superpower, and together they, like, uphold the ideals of righteousness on the planet Earth, you know? Like, this card, if we're if we're talking about um, how to, you know, rekindle an inner child, like, a sense of excitement about the world, this card is asking you to, like, align yourself with ideals that might, as an adult, seem, like, cheesy or um, outgrown, and remember that there is no outgrowing, like, 
basically the daughter of good and evil. <laughs> like, there's no outgrowing that. Like, there's definitely nuances that we adopt as we get older, like, that we can, we can see that it's not always, like, black and white. It's not always, like, good and bad. It's not always, like, binary code, you know? Like, our, our thinking becomes more nuanced, but this card is asking you to like rekindle your hope in good in goodness and whatever that looks like for you like of course it, it can look different for everybody but rekindle your hope in goodness and your faith in uh you know growing up to be that that hero <laughs> that hero figure okay finally we have the three of swords all right let's get this reading going three of swords Okay. In this card, a maiden is pictured playing a triangle crafted from tiny swords. She contemplates the prospect of harmony and focus. In an open window above, a songbird is perched on the sill, listening to her melody. The songbird symbolizes freedom. Traditionally, the Three of Swords is a card of stress and confusion, often signaling lost love. However, what is actually lost is self-love, for the mind has lost contact with the heart. What is needed is a reunion of the heart chakra and the crown chakra in order that a symphony of thought can find a melodic message of truth within. The bird is a messenger liberating the girl from limiting thoughts. The number three signifies joy, harmony, and communication. The triangle also symbolizes the spiritual trinity of spirit, heart, and body. The girl is learning how to play with the blend and blend these three aspects of human existence. The castle walls suggest the mental constructs that block true expression of beautiful soul qualities in the world. Remember that your thoughts are your allies. Learn to play your thoughts like an orchestra. Your fears might be the drums, your hopes the violins, and your victories the trumpets. Seek the pure joy of the mind. Don't let the refrains of self-doubt cause mental discord. Your daily language can be as magnificent as a finely tuned Mozart concerto. On a practical level, this card may suggest bringing more music into your life. Play an instrument or listen to a favorite recording. The magic of sound can be a healing force, soothing your mind, calming your emotions, and relaxing your body. Yeah, that's great. Um, so as well as, you know, listening to your thoughts and using them to manifest, like listening very clearly, being in this stillness, um, this card is asking you to play and have fun with music. So listen to your favorite song dance you know get get um dance have like a dance party in your living room or like while you're doing your dishes or something um just get your body in tune with your heart in tune with your mind so that you can you know be in alignment so that this manifestation comes more swiftly anyway um that is what i have for you today Thank you for being here. Love you all.